Hello everyone. This is uh, Wednesday, September 1st, 2021, 1.08 p.m. 24 degrees Celsius in the city of Halifax. And what we're going to make a video of today is this is the old burial ground. It's very old, it's been here a long time. And it's a historic site. But there's a couple of things in particular we want to look at. And one is Captain, okay, this, we'll, get, we'll get this all straight here, okay? On June 1st, 1813, Chesapeake, Captain James Lawrence sailed out of Boston Harbor to attack China. Captain Philip broke. Certain of another British defeat, Bostonians anticipating the evening's victory banquet came out to see and enjoy the fight. They were shocked to see that only 15 minutes after Shannon's great guns fired at Chesapeake's ensign dropped up, rose the blue ensign below it. The stars and stripes appeared, his captain severely wounded, the first lieutenant killed him. Fell to 22-year-old Halifax-born Provin Wallace, Shannon's second lieutenant, to command the ship. The third lieutenant, Charles Faulkner, took charge of the bride, giving special care to Lawrence, who lay in the water mortally wounded. The two frigates sailed eastward into the gathering darkness and disappeared. The sightseers returned to Boston to report the unbelievable news. Okay, now, this is a, this is the guy I think right here we want to see his, his grave. He's the guy that was responsible for the burning of the White House. Major General Ross sailed to North America in the summer of 1814 from, Peninsular, from the Peninsular War against France to command the British Army on the east coast of the United States, opening a second front to relieve the pressure of the Niagara Peninsula. He personally led, here's the part we want to get to, he personally led the British troops ashore in March through Maryland to attack the American Bladensburg on August 24th, 1814. From Bladensburg, Ross captured Washington, D.C., burned the public buildings of the city, including the White House. All right, and now, in retaliation for that, yeah, they're way out of there. They came into Baltimore, and a sniper's bullet hit him on September 12th, 1814. His body was brought back to Halifax, where it was buried with full military honors. This is the guy right there. Okay. And there's a there's a grave site back here. I want to take you to where the guy that was responsible for burning the White House and the government buildings is buried right here in this graveyard. And I'm going to take you to his grave site. The lettering on the headstone is impossible to read, so I went by a few things from that picture to find a spot, and I'm 100% sure that I found it. So I'm going to share that with you folks now. This is a very old grave site in Halifax. This is a well-maintained spot, and it's a historic site. And only in tourist season is this open. I wouldn't be able to get in here any other time of the year, except right this time. It was open all summer, but I didn't get to it. But thankful I got here before it's closed up again for the for the winter season. It's not open. You can't come in here. All right, now, I'm just looking for my spot. Because this don't look quite right. 
Oh, I'm not back far enough. I know where I gotta be. Yeah. Okay, this is, uh, I only walked in here once on the weekend and found the spot. And I can prove that it's the spot better by what's back here. There's only one spot in this, this graveyard that looks like this. All right, this is where Major Ross is buried. Right there. Right there. Because the picture out front shows that like that, and those two trees that come down to a V are in that picture. When we go back out, I'll show you. That's his grave right there. The guy that was responsible for burning the government buildings and the White House is buried right here in Halifax in that box right there. You can't read the stone because it must have had something written on it once, but there's nothing there. And there's a stone back here that might have something to do with it, but there, you can't read it either. They're so weather-worn, you can't, you can't read what's on them. So that's the spot, because that's the only spot with the two trees come down to a V like that, and with that marker on the front. And that headstone is right in front of it. So when we go back out, I'll show you just to verify I have the right spot. And there's one other thing I want to show you while I'm in here. There's this monument out here with the lion on top of it. That's of significance. A lot of these spots in here are significant, but I don't know the history on everything. So I'm only going to show you what I know, okay? Which is only fair. I can't show you what I don't know. That's all I know about this, this graveyard so far, is these two things. Now we gotta go around the other side because there's a plaque there. It's where I'm gonna be getting all my information about this. It's been here a long time. You can see the lion up on the top. They hoisted that up after they built it. They put it up in sections and the lion was the last thing to go on the top. How do I know that? Because there's a picture of that over here somewhere. which I will show you shortly. That's how I know that. Right here. Ah, uh, no, not right here. I'm at the wrong sign, over here. Right in front of the monument. Of course it is. There's the picture of them hoisting up the, the lion to go on top of the monument after it was all built. Now, I'll well, just point my camera up at the monument and I'll read a little bit about this. This monument was erected in 1860 in memory of Major A.F. Wellsford and Captain W.B.C.A. Parker. These two Halifax men both perished during the Crimean War in September 1855. They participated in the assault on the Great Redan part of the eastern defenses of Sebastopol. I hope I pronounced that right. George Lang is credited with constructing this rare pre-Confederation war memorial. So before this country was even Canada, this memorial was built for these two people. And Lang also built the federal building in Halifax known and restored as the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. 1855 he was killed and this monument went up in 1860. So it took five years from the time he was killed and buried until we got this monument. But this is great. Now you got a monument of him. This went up in 1860. So this is not all that recent, but it's 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 over a hundred it's about it's over hundred and fifty years ago, which isn't a long time. 
in thousands of years. But anyway, that's the two things I wanted to show you in this burial ground. It's called the Old Burial Ground. And there's a plaque here. I might want to see what it says as well. Here's something here. The Old Burial Ground is a common burial ground lie many of the first citizens of Halifax. Their descendants and men of British Army and Royal Navy were stationed here. First opened in 1749. That's an important year in Halifax. That's a lot of things opened in 1749. A lot of the old churches were built in 1749. So, and during that period, over 12,000 men and women and children were buried here. Hard to believe there's 12,000 people buried in this little graveyard. They must have just covered it over and, and put more graves on top. Well, I know, 12,000 men, women and children were buried here. Fewer than 10% of their graves are marked. So I take it there was a big hole and they put them in it and covered it over. And some of the important figures, they got a headstone and the rest are just buried under here. And nobody will ever know who they were. Okay. Let's see what this plaque is right here. Canadian government placed this here. The old burial ground, which contains more than 1,200 head and footstones, constitutes a unique concentration of gravestone art, a rich variety of styles. And it goes on to say, talk about different things. That was landscape in the 1860s and restored as a park, outdoor museum in 1990 to 1991. It bears silent witness to the complex cultural traditions of early British North America. So that's a plaque that was there. Now, if you like, we could just take a walk around this place and I'll just show it to you. I can't tell you who all these people are that's buried in here. But we'll take a walk around just to walk through it. They say there's 1,200 graves, but there is definitely not 1,200 headstones in here. There's no possible way. That that just goes up there and around here, unless there's part of this graveyard somewhere else. But I would say they're probably buried with no headstones in the underneath there. Just buried. They had to put them somewhere. They probably died so fast in the fighting wars that they had no time to, no place to put them. So they just put them all in the ground and covered them up. And some of them got lucky and got a headstone put up here where they're buried. That's what I would say because there's, there's not 1,200 graves in here. I doubt if there's any more than 100, 200 at the most. This old burial ground is located right on the corner of Barrington Street and Spring Garden Road. And if you go that way any farther, you got some parts of the university right handy here, and the south end is just down that way. Okay, University is just up behind here, which you have three universities in this city. So that's but we're talking about the burial ground today, so we won't worry about the universities. Of course, the largest university here is Dalhousie, but we're not talking about universities too much today. Do a little video on this old burial ground. It's not called a graveyard, it's called the old burial ground. And some folks are buried under the ground and a lot of them are buried in these cement boxes on top of the ground, which I guess was the style back then. These apparently are the, the important people. I don't know the history on all these boxes here, but anyway, we'll take a, a walk up to you just to give you a look around. If you're not from Nova Scotia and you've never been to Halifax, to give you a chance to see this place, the old burial ground in Halifax.
Some of them are partially down into the ground and then the top of them sticking up. Imagine how old this is with that wall like that. Eh? Probably 1849, it's likely. And most of them, you can't even make out the, the, the names on the headstones anymore because they're too weather-worn. See, here's another one. You can't see anything on it. They're, they're, the weather has, over time, here's one here, you can see a little bit of scratching on it, but you can't make it out. And then once in a while, you'll find one like this that you can see, partially. But it's definitely a, an old historic site. Yeah, I'd say there's a couple of hundred, 300 at the most grave sites here. So the rest of them must be just buried under here and no markers. I would never get in here once they close those gates after the tourists are all gone. Most of these people were military men and their wives, families buried in here. You can hear the construction beeper going in the background there. The construction job going on right over there in the corner. And when you come in, I didn't read them, but when you come in, there's, there's ground rules here. But in the old bearing grounds, significant part of the heavy, he could be museum, yeah. Uh, I guess there's no, you're supposed to treat the stones with respect. Please call the ground, keep the grounds clean. Rubbing the stone is not permitted. You cannot rub these stones and try to see what the letters are because if you're worn down and rubbing them will just add to the problem. So you don't come in here and disturb anything. You can walk around freely. Nobody will bother you. Well, speaking from last year, I always wanted to come in here because I seen the sign where the, the guy that was involved in the burning of the White House, which is a significant thing for a Canadian to do. I don't think you'd be successful these days, but back then, things were different. It's a different time. Americans were trying to take over Canada and, and they were coming here. And, so we have to defend the city against them, and, and uh, it was not inconceivable that some Canadians might go down there to do some damage. So anyways, that's his, uh, that's his name. Don't forget Major General Robert Ross. He left from 1766 to 1814 when he was gunned down with a sniper's bullet. If you don't remember anything but that, that's, that's, uh... So, let's see, he was, uh... I can't tell you the whole history on him, because, uh... I haven't read all the whole history, I just know what's in this poster. This little sign right there. So, that pretty much covers that. So, we're gonna walk up the street. Let's see, how long did I take making that video? Well, that was, yeah, about 20 minutes. 
I'm surely I can find a little something to, to show you after that. Something of some significance. Anybody want to know how old that church is across the street? I'm going to tell you. It's pretty old. I saw the sign before, but I forget what it said. So we'll walk over here again, and I'll try to find that. This church was founded, you can see it for yourself, 1749. That's a very significant date in the city, 1749. A lot of churches were built and, and started operating in 1749. So this is a, I love those doors. It's got a great, great set of doors on it. Look at those doors. I can tell you they're about 12, 12 or 14 feet tall. Beautiful wrought iron hinges. Very nice. And this church is like the other ones that were founded in 1749. This one is still operational too. This one, Sunday services, 10.30 a.m. always long. This is the United Church of Canada. There are several of those in Halifax, but this is probably the oldest one, no doubt. Okay, so now you know, 1749. Now I gotta get it back across the street. If I can. Carefully. Okay, I can make it. There we go, I'm way, way ahead of those cars. And the shade feels nice in under these trees. There's the building I'm waiting for them to finish. Because right in the hub of the middle of the city, we're going to have a little plaza, food court and stuff. Used to be there. And like I've said several times, it ran down over the years and wasn't doing well. So they had to shut it right down completely and cut it, rebuild this front, make it look more attractive. And it's going to definitely be bigger. There'll be a lot more stuff in there than like before. So I can hardly wait till it took opened up. Maybe by Christmas. Okay, yeah, I think maybe that'll be the marker. Maybe by Christmas. So that just about does it for the old burial ground here. And I'm gonna just turn it off for now. If you like this video, push that like button. And if you not a subscriber yet, you can become a subscriber by just pushing subscribe, and that would be great. I love it. And so, on that note, bye for now. See you again soon.